I want to greet you by my Navajo uh, greeting word, yate. Yate is a cosmic word. Uh, ya refers to the universe. And ate is the existence of the universe. And it acknowledges uh, the earth is a, a participant of a much bigger universe. In our language, we say, Nohosan those two are pulled together. And so it, uh, implicit in this word is the earth is a participant of a much bigger universe. In our language, when we say yate, we recognize the existence and our deepest appreciation that this gift that's given to all mankind, and we greet people with that. And welcome to our land here. Uh, that we say the nebikeya, the nebikeya, the word keya, ke refers to the moccasin or the shoe. Ya is underneath the shoe. And whenever you walk on the ground, the earth, you leave footprints. So it connotes you know, a mother infant relationship, you being the infant and the mother, mother infant relationship. And so there are all these uh, footprints left behind over the years for several hundred years. And so uh, land is uh, defined by these footprints. So welcome to uh, the Nekbekeya. And also behind me is Monument Valley. We're in the midst of all these mesas. And uh, the word for uh, Monument Valley in our language is Tsevi uh, Nziske. Tse is rocks, mesa. And Bi is is all the spaces in between these mesas, the spaces. And Bi Nziske, it's all, you know, open. So it's, welcome to Tsevi Nziske, welcome to Monument Valley. We believe that we're bounded by the uh, four sacred mountains, this is the Nebuchadnezzar, one to the east, one to the south, one to the west, and one to the north. Then there's also three rivers. Uh, one that's to the east is the Rio Grande River. The one to the north is the San Juan River, the Animus River. And then the one to the west is the Little Colorado River. So these are all our natural boundaries. So we have a sense of place we call the Nebuchadnezzar. We say uh, to refer to the, to the reflection, to the light uh, from the star. But a much deeper uh, meaning from the elders, they say that when you uh, talk about the stars, you say, Setsuyo Sontso. Yasniho it acknowledges that in the center, everything has a center. And these stars, each one of them, they have a center and they're constantly moving. It's like a holistic movement throughout the universe. They tell us that we come from the stars and we also come from uh, the sun, that we come from the stars and the light. Uh, you know, it's all energy. We, we, we were all energy at one time. And so from that energy, we became who we are. So whenever um, we look back at the stars like Pleiades, uh, we're looking back at our ancient past. We're actually looking at the star, the formation and everything that evolved from this original light. We are that light process at this time. So it's a, like a beautiful gift that comes from nature. And it's the same with the sun, you know, that energy. And how we relate to the sun, we say uh, jingo, jingo is day. Hana'e, hana'e refers to the eye. The sun becomes your eye during the day. At night time, the moon, we say, Eiko is night. Hana, e hana is the you know the eye. Your 
the moon becomes your eye. That's how we see it. Our elders tell us that we come from the star. And uh, I don't think it's not much different from what Western science says. You take uh, one of the people that is well known, our scientists, you know, Albert Einstein. He says the energy from the sun is matter. Energy up there, it'll become matter, it'll become, become a flower or become a human being. You know, it's the energy. And the matter is also energy. It's one and the same. It, it, this is old knowledge. Uh, our elders, they say the same thing. The energy that's up there uh, precedes all life process. All life process. So it's the sun's doing. The sun makes everything you know, organic. It's the sun's doing, it's the sun's activity. And so how we relate to the sun, uh, when the sun comes up in the morning, sunrise, the light from there will shine here. So this word the, in Navajo is called shitha, my forehead, shitha. So how we relate to the sun, we say shitha. And the sunlight in the morning will shine here first, then it will go down. In the evening, when the sun goes down, it's the reverse. The sunlight will go back up this way and then leave. When the sun goes down, the evening twilight goes down. So how we, that's how we see it. So it's all relationship, you know, it's relationship based. It's, 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 we are part of, you know, the sun. Uh, you know, only our words separate us. You know, we say sun up there. It's, these, these are words, but in the traditional language and implicit in the language is that we, there's an understanding that we are one and the same all the time. It's where we came from. And uh, when we uh, die of old age, that's where we go back to, back into where we came from. That's how people talk about it. And that's, uh, that's what they call it, you know, where, where the person comes from, you go back that way. When uh, the elders uh, talk about the stars uh, and the relationship that they have, um, they say Susuyo, Susu meaning uh, you're the grandchild of, of a star, an old ancient star. And so that's how they talk about it. It's an old, old, old word, and it's uh, all about relationship. And so that's how people uh, talk about themselves as they relate to the star, that, that we are star people, they tell us. When the elders talk about the sun eclipse, they say, Johanna uh, eta san. Uh, is the sun. The sun died. The sun is died. But it's much more of a metaphorical description rather than a literal description because they also say that the eclipse is over. The sun came back out. Those are words. Hanatza. So that implies that they also know that uh, uh, that it, it was the, a shadow that you know went between the sun and the earth, and the sun came back out. It's more of a metaphorical description than uh, than a literal description. The other word that I hear being used is Jona uh, e the, the sun made itself different from the norm, uh, what people are used to seeing, the daily solar cycle, the seasonal solar cycle, uh, the sun made itself different by the eclipse. And so that's 
uh, what they mean in Navajo by the use of the word Chohana is the sun, Sahodilia, it made itself different. And so it's one of those descriptions, and, and there's a general understanding that we are part of this whole uh, natural cosmic process. It's natural. And uh, you just have to observe some of the cultural restrictions, for example, not looking directly at the, at the sun during a, uh, an eclipse, whether it be a full uh, solar eclipse or an angular uh, solar eclipse, a partial eclipse, you, know, you, you just don't look at it. And one way to ensure that people don't look at the sun, especially little children, is to tell them to go inside. It doesn't matter the age, you still get affected by the sun. That's what they tell us. So over the years, people must have experienced that this, the sun, looking at the sun directly during an eclipse can hurt your eye, damage your eye. So somewhere through their life process, life experience, they found that out. So it's a real hard restriction. When there's a, an eclipse, they tell people go inside. Just respect, you know, the cycle, and uh, respect the cycle, and um, and let time pass. And once people know that the sun is back out, like the way it should be, uh, then then people go about their business. It's uh, during a time when. Uh, in addition to not observing, people are also told uh, uh, not to uh, drink water, not to eat at that time, no unusual activities, and just uh, be in reverence, uh, let time pass. Because uh, they say that we don't know the impact, because everything uh, that happens, there's an impact, cause and effect. It might be minor, and so, uh, to ensure that uh, there's uh, no bad effects, this certain reverence, you know, let time pass, let nature pass, and and then you go on after uh, after an eclipse, you go on living. Our elders tell us that the sun, the moon, and the earth, the go through constant uh, renewal by aligning themselves. When they align themselves, they are going through a renewal process. It's a, one, one of the natural law that's been observed over the years. And, uh, and it also, uh, the sun rebalances itself also with this uh, alignment. Whenever that alignment happens, whenever that eclipse happens, so it's a part of uh, nature's order. And so in this process, it's very dynamic. A dynamic balance exists in the interaction of the three uh, celestial body. This uh, process is uh, acknowledged over and over, over the years, and people are aware of this uh, uh, knowledge and it's, uh, knowledge that has been followed and understood for years. I want to also explain uh, the Navajo uh, world view and how uh, Navajos uh, view the earth and the, the universe. And uh, what we have here, the basket, uh, people call this Navajo basket. There's an outlet here, so when you use the basket, you face this towards the east, the outlet, this part. It's where the sunlight comes in. So this was used to build the Hogan. So when you go inside the Hogan, the door will always face east. And then as the sun travels, it travels uh, clockwise. We call it shabik. It has that curvature in the sun's uh, path. 
goes. So when you go inside the Hogan, you walk in accordance with the cosmic uh, cycle of the created by the sun. So you don't go inside the Hogan and walk this way. You walk this way, clockwise. And so this is uh, used to um, to to arrange other things and how you should live in accordance with the cosmic cycle. People tell us that this is this represents Earth. So if you go look to the east, look to the south, look to the west, look to the north, what you'll see is a circle. This is the circle. And then the coming of the sunlight coming in here, uh, the, this what becomes the door at the center is uh, the fire, central fire. And uh, and then these markings here, these are mountain like like these uh, mesa here, all over. And then you've seen uh, the rainbow, uh, rainbow. It's the rainbows in here. It's part of this cycle. So everything that you observe here is within this basket here on Earth. But if you flip it around this way, what you see is the universe. You know, it's like a dome. So at, during the day, it's still a dome. At night, it's still a dome, except, you know, at night you see the stars. So in the center of this universe is the North Star right here. And then how the constellation move, they go counterclockwise. So as they weave, they go counterclockwise. And there's uh, eight, eight main constellation that serves as the backbone. And then additional four, 12 altogether, you know, it, it culminates, uh, with the uh, uh, Milky Way. The Milky Way goes all the way around. And the Milky Way can be observed in the third week uh, of January each year in the pre-dawn hour. You can actually see the pre-dawn, uh, in the pre-dawn hour, the whole of the Milky Way in a circle. So it's, this basket is encircled with the Milky Way. So it's, you know, it's the Milky Way galaxy that's observed. So, Mother Earth, Father Sky, everything, the whole universe is here in this uh, basket. And then during, uh, inside the Hogan, they usually put a hole right here and that sunlight will hit this black part. That will determine, you know, summer solstice and winter solstice and the equinox. And then also, this is also used to talk about the months. October over here, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, all the way around. And, and, and there's different kinds of months, uh, the, the seasonal, there's a seasonal uh, calendar, there's a solar calendar, and the, at this time in October, uh, we're told that uh, this is the end of the summer season. The warm air change. Now the cold air is starting to come in. They call it sun, so it's like a you know. This is where the two season comes together, and it's right here. If you were to place it in in the bag of the basket, and then so the it, the seasonal cycle. The seasonal cycle starts with October, not January. You know, it starts with October, it goes all the way around. And then it's also divided into uh, four parts again. So that also uh, becomes the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. And then in each of these months, there's also uh, a constellation that's associated with each of the month. Uh, of the 12 months uh, in those constellations are observed between the crescent moon and the full moon, two-week period, the constellation that comes up in the pre-dawn hour becomes that, uh, that constellation becomes 
uh, in Navajo, they call it us the rays that you know that are created by the sun. You could see the constellation in there. So that month between that month, whatever month that is in October would be large. Yeah? The parting of the season month in there in the pre-dawn hour, that rays from the sun, you can see that constellation. That constellation is associated with that month. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's essence you can see, you know, in, in the pre-dawn hour. So that's also, you know, 12 different months here. So you can just use the basket to talk about uh, the whole natural cosmic order and how Navajos understand it. And so this, these baskets, they're, they're value. So, so what you see here is weaving of everything that's observed here on Earth, weaving also what's up there at nighttime, the cosmic, uh, the stars, the constellation. Yeah, all here in this basket.